The time that I spend in the ocean, the more that I want to know about the ocean and the more that I want to be involved in the ocean throughout my life. When I'm in the water, it's just like no other feeling. I mean, I love my daily swim. If I have a day without a swim, I just feel like something's missing from my day. Um, it just, it just feels like nothing else really matters except being in the water at that moment and what's happening in the ocean around you. Hi, I'm Amy and I'm really passionate about the environment and I try to live as sustainably as possible. Growing up by the countryside definitely grew my environmental awareness and conscience. Um, I was quite often outdoors as a child and grew up with my friends often being outside, going on camping, walking, just regularly spending more time outdoors than indoors, which definitely has grown my interest in not just the land environment, but also the ocean. So since living in Cornwall um, and being able to spend more time in the environment and to really get to know the local environment and ways in which I can help it and work towards building opportunities for people to be able to also engage in helping it is really important to me. I'm really passionate about living sustainably and conserving the environment because I've been involved a lot with local environmental groups and social enterprises and I've really become educated by them and inspired by them to want to do more for the environment and there are so many organisations that are unknown to most people but they're just doing such incredible things and I think that being able to help them is actually quite a privilege and we should all be doing as much as we can for the environment. One way that I try to help the environment as much as I can is through incorporating beach cleaning into my daily routine. Um, so I've done this for a few years now and I just try and go out on which would have just been a walk but I've now turned it into a clean up so I'll always take a bag with me and just pick up as much rubbish as I can um, and then t take it all home and sort it out into its different ways. I just think that more people should feel that they can do this and it should become more normal to see people on the beaches just cleaning up rubbish. I'd say that it's, I do see it more regularly now than when I first started out, like now it's not that rare to be at the beach and to see other people with a bag and litter picker picking up rubbish as they go. So a major issue of plastic pollution is the effects that it's having on marine wildlife. So there's more and more reports like this where marine creatures are getting entangled within the plastics, um, which on a wider scale is causing species to suffer and sometimes be depleted by the plastic pollution. So these are the bits that I've collected today at my cleanup at Cover Axe. Obviously quite shocking and sad the amount that I've collected in such a short space of time. Um, but we'll, this will all get sent off to Gweek where at a volunteer run sorting day we'll separate everything into its different materials so hard plastics, soft plastics, fishing gear um, and then each section will be sent off to a different place to be recycled. Uh, hi so I'm Steve and with the help of loads of awesome volunteers. Uh, we are Clean Ocean Sailing. Uh, we sail around the Cornish coast in that funny old boat there. She's 115 years old and we use her to go fishing for plastic and um, we carry volunteers with us and um, all the kayaks that are made from the rubbish that we pick up and to our kind of USP really is like accessing parts of the coast that you can't get to by land and we unfortunately find that they tend to be the worst affected places. So, I mean, we've been picking up plastic for decades, but not in an organised way. It's only it's about six years ago now that we built the website and we started counting and separating, you know, and recording everything that we find. And our data at the end of 2022 shows 62 tonnes of plastic, 23 million individual pieces. 
So after it's sorted back, back here in Greek, a lot of it gets repurposed locally, which is really great. But the vast majority of it goes to Exeter, where it's repurposed and pelletized and made into kayaks, sea kayaks, which we've got three of them sitting on the key just here. Attitudes are changing. I think people are, especially here, but I think globally, people are starting to understand that once you've made something out of plastic, uh, that plastic never goes away. It, you know, if you burn it, it it's in the sky in different chemicals. If you chuck it in landfill, well, it just breaks up into tiny bits. It never, bio, it never biologically breaks down. So it's in our environment forever. And plastic lasts so long, hundreds of years. But I think with, um, you know, with what they call climate anxiety and, and climate change generally, I think the one message I'd like to share with the world really is that, sure, you know, when you see stuff on telly about, you know, massive typhoons in Madagascar and stuff and the climate change being such a big problem, as an individual, it's really hard to see how we could ever make a difference to that. But if all 8 billion people on the planet did something small, just picked up a bit of rubbish instead of walked past it, for example, it would sort it out. But it's really hopeful, you know, businesses are changing their ways, government is trying to put tax on things, uh, but it really has to happen from both sides. It has to come from the government through tax incentives and businesses thinking about end of life, of their products. But it also has to come from us. As when we go shopping, we have to make choices about what we buy and what we don't buy. But ultimately, we just got to try, you know? It, it does seem immeasurably ridiculous. I mean, our focus is marine plastics and six years, 60 tonnes, great. You know, that sounds great. But in those six years, something like 9 million tonnes a year goes in the sea every year. So it's, it's a drop in the ocean. But hey, we've got to try. <laughs>